Hello and welcome back. Before we get into what I thought was quite a quite an interesting uh, and and yeah a thought provoking chat with Dave Mayhays and the former Stormers lock, uh, just a couple of reminders from my side. The first one being that this show is sponsored by CapX.com, the official trading partners of Eventus. To enter Eventus hamper giveaway, go to www.capx.com. Click on the front page link and follow the instructions on how to enter the hamper giveaway. The second a reminder is just to subscribe, rate, review. It helps me massively, more than you guys can imagine. Um, with that being said, let's get into it. Let's get into the chat. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think. Uh, so any feedback is welcome and encouraged. I hope you guys enjoy it and yeah, let me know what you guys think. Today I'm joined by former Stormers Lock, uh, Dave Mayhazen, who's recently retired from uh, from the game due to concussion at the age of 24, a, a decision that I'm sure we, we are going to get into uh, and one that's incredibly brave and, and I know that a lot of people admire. Uh, he's got a fascinating rugby journey. Uh, not 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 many people can say that uh, they've had a journey like his. Uh, so I can't wait to hear his um, his insights and the wisdom he's got to share. And you all just have a conversation with him uh, and and just kind of speak rugby, his journey, concussion. Um, and you all, what, what's also next? And I thought... You know, it'd be cool just to journey with you, Dave, uh, through your career. Uh, and I know, because I know, I mean, I'm sure you've got some pretty sweet memories. Uh, so, yeah, thanks so much for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, sure. No stress, man. Happy to be here. Excited to, to have a, a chat with you. Yeah, cool. And again, I mean, Dave and I were supposed to do it last night, but load shedding had its way. Uh, so, yeah, thanks again for being uh, super yeah, accommodating and joining me again. Um, you know, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been, uh, you know, I wouldn't have been, yeah, if you had said, no, we're not going to do it, I would have been like, you know what, I understand. Uh, so, yeah, thanks. Sorry for messing you around yesterday. Um, yeah. No problem at all. Got a lot of free time at the moment, so not really <laughs> not really a stress. <laughs> no, I can imagine. But we're going to get into that. We will get into that. Um, but, I mean, at first, I mean, how are you feeling uh, post-retirement, six weeks out? Um, how, what are the emotions? How are you? What are the kinds of you know, things you're feeling at the moment? I mean, I'm okay. Hey, I think uh, life life kind of goes on. Um, obviously, uh, still still a little raw. I mean, six weeks isn't isn't that much time, but it's been long enough to kind of process everything and kind of like just figure out what I want to do next and what comes after this. Um, and then also just been nice to the advantage of living on this side of the world. Um, is that we still get to go to the games every week, still supporting the team, still still very much like backing the boys for the season. So yeah, no, things are things are things aren't too bad. You know, I'm I'm more blessed than most people. So I've got that. You say now that you, you are supporting the boys. Um, and I saw you posted on the on the Stormers page as well. Uh, I've been doing like a, a party stand type thing, block one, two, two, and Man, it's been so cool just to to be at the stadium again, and, and yeah, I suppose you know New, it isn't Newlands, but if we can create something like it um, and get the faithful behind uh, behind the, the boys, I mean, Saturday was pretty special. I, I got sent a video of us uh, doing the um, "Hey Baby," and it sounded pretty loud. So yeah, it's uh, it's cool just to be able to support the guys again. Uh, so that was you guys in the corner over there. I was wondering. That. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, geez, it's, it's phenomenal. I think like, obviously when, whenever the team is playing well, fans will follow. Like, I think the, the nice thing about like the, the Newlands, the Newlands faithful is that they were always there to support no matter how we were playing, but obviously the, the better the boys are playing, then the more people will show up and maybe be join the faithful. So no, look, I mean, no, I don't think like Newlands, Newlands had its, had its, it had so much history and so much going for it, but it's a, unfortunately out of uh, things that were out of control happened. And so now we at Cape Town, which is also just an incredible stadium. I mean, you'll, you saw from being there on Saturday yeah. when there's a crowd going and the boys are playing well, it's an absolute vibe. So no, very, very nice to see the boys doing their things and very nice to see the crowds back supporting everyone after a couple of years of silence. Yeah. And, and I mean, I think we saw that from the sevens, you know, like when, when the sevens happened, um, I went, I, I, was, I was lucky enough to go like the, first, or the past three years, obviously before COVID and just like the final and the blitz box on the final is like 60 odd thousand people there. It's nuts, bro. It's loud. 
it's incredible. Um, but I think also Newlands, um, and we'll get off Newlands and everything, but you know, it's, it's part of the, it's part of the, the sport. Um, well, it, it felt really, the, the fans felt, you almost felt like you're on the pitch when you're at Newlands. And I think maybe that's what Greenpoint lacks. You're, you're a bit further away. Um, yeah. The child. Uh, def- definitely, obviously, like the, the close contact, so you, you are very close to the pitch. I think the, the, the stadium obviously wasn't designed for rugby, it was designed for soccer. I mean, we can see that with like the scrums, the, the yep. pitch gets worn up quite often. Um, but ugh, I mean, I don't think any stadium will ever be perfect. Um, I can tell you this though, if you, if you get that stadium packed to the max, like we do at the sevens, no one really cares that you're standing an extra five meters back. So like, yeah. we just need a call on the faithful to come and come and join us. Exactly, bro. And it's what you make of it. It's what you make of it. Um, and yeah, I think I think something pretty special is happening. There's a romance building around around the the, the DHL stadium, which is cool. Um, mm. But yeah, so as I said, you know, I really wanted just a journey through your career because it's a fascinating one, um, and like just a really cool one uh, for for guys who like you know didn't necessarily didn't play uh, at a high level at school, um, and, and we're going to get into that. But I always I always find those sort of stories just so cool, um, and, and just you found yourself in a in a situation where. And on the statement, which I'll read later, um, you said you you live it. You were living a dream you didn't know you had. I was just like, bro, that's that's such a cool way to put it. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm, I'm excited to dive into it. Uh, but the first question of every podcast is this one: What does it take to be a successful individual or operate in a high pressure environment? Yeah, I mean, I think there's there's a couple of cliches and bumper stickers you can always slap onto that statement, like work hard and all of that. Um, I think the the one that's maybe not so up there is uh, you need understanding, basically of what understanding of yourself, understanding of what you're good at and what you're bad at. And because unfortunately, there's I know so many guys who worked harder than I did and didn't make it. And I know so many guys who didn't work harder than like others and are, were Springboks at like, I don't know, 23 or something like that. So there's, there's always, so know what makes you unique, know what makes you worth, worth your, how I say your spot in a heart, in, in the team, uh, in the professional setting. And then to, to, to thrive in a high pressure environment, you need to be able to handle criticism is a big one because there's always going to be you there's a certain level that's expected and demanded of you. Um, so you need to be able to take criticism well and uh, fix problems. And then just, yeah, I think you also need to be able to find time to like de- detox from that high high pressure situation so like a lot of guys will spend time with their families on sundays or whatever whatever it does or you have like a glass of wine you have a bri or whatever just any way that you can kind of remove yourself from the environment just for an hour or a day so that when you get back you can give everything and yeah just kind of throw your all back into that environment because if you if you're doing something fifty percent as opposed to uh, flat out, obviously you know the results will vary. So you need every person's different. Everyone has their own way of doing things. So I suppose it's just finding what works for you and being able to maintain it for as long as possible. Mm. Well, say so, uh, quite interesting. You said criticism, and I wanted to pick up in terms of your perspective. So, so you you didn't play a particularly high level at school. Uh, you got to UCT. You started playing a bit of rugby. So, you know, you were at Paul Boys High, which comes with I me mean, if you're playing first team at Paul Boys High, you know, if that's going to come with a bit of criticism. So I wanted to f- figure out or ask you, you know, when when you started first getting that bit of criticism, you kind of got it at a ve- at a pretty high level. So it started at a high level for you. Um, you didn't have... Say again. You mean, sorry, you're saying it started at a high level in what sense? No, I'm saying, yeah, so when you started, you, when you first got your first bit of criticism it would have been at a, a varsity cup or or um you know a public criticism or at a, a stormers level um but you didn't kind of build uh, the criticism from school you know so it, it wasn't a progression you kind of went into a deep end how did you manage to 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 figure that out to navigate that space 
Yeah, I think I I grew up I grew up in a very loving household that always emphasized not not giving too much, not heeding the advice of people. Hold on, sorry, I can word this better. But it's they 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 always used to say, "Don't take criticism from people you wouldn't take advice from." So if someone, if I wouldn't listen to someone for advice, then why would I listen to them for criticism? So that's that was one thing I always tried to keep in mind. Not not didn't do it very well, um, but you know you try and try. Um, I think yeah, there's you just have to know everyone's going to have bad games. Everyone's going to have bad bad periods in which they go through i think you just need to back your ability back the work that you've put in and and trust yourself i think yeah it's no no matter what age you receive criticism at i think it's always going to be tough but obviously the more you get it the more experience like the better you are at handling it so i think it just took time really to kind of deal with it eventually mm. And and also you said you know understanding understanding of yourself, what what does that look like? Like what what did it look like through in your in your career? Um, when you so when you say Dave Mason's going to un- understands himself, uh, that allows him to be in a high pressure environment. What does that look like for you? What yeah. So I I, I always knew I was never going to be the the poster boy for any team I played for. I was never going to be the guy who scored the tries or had the the line breaks or did these incredible things. I was just going to be the guy that kind of did his job very well. And then when people went and looked back afterwards, they would kind of be like, oh, wow, he kind of ticked all the boxes. So like a lot of the times I was hitting, I was up there with like high amounts of tackles, hitting the, hitting the breakdowns, like just kind of trucking the ball up in the carries, never doing anything exceptionally special, but doing my job. And then knowing that the biggest contribution I could make was around the lineup. So being very anal about the fact that we win our own lineup ball and we steal their lineup ball. Uh, we don't give them a meter on malls and we try and get as many as we can. So I think, yeah, that was, that was my understanding of my role was just knowing what kind of player I was, because every player is going to be different. Like, I mean, just for locks, you could have a Bucky's versus a Matfield. That's two very different, different styles of play. I think it was just understanding the role that I was going to play and how I could benefit the team. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. And I think that also, you know, comes from hard, uh, hard work. And, and in your statement as well, I'll read a bit. It says I've woken up at 4 a.m. to drive, to training sessions, train till I've vomited. I've missed more family uh, gathering, uh, family and social gatherings than I can count. That that obviously requires a lot of sacrifice. You said you grew up in a, a very loving ha- a household. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but maybe possibly a tight knit group of of family. Um, you know, so so how how easy was that sacrifice, or hard was that sacrifice, knowing that you maybe not going to be the poster boy, and, and like. Maybe possibly only the coaches will kind of see the, the the fruits of your labor in terms of like Dave Dave is playing phenomenally well, um, but not the post well, not scoring tries. Um, how how did that sacrifice? How yeah? You know, how did you make those sacrifices? Yeah, I think uh, sport sport. I never, I never really. I mean, sacrifice. It sounds like I'm I'm doing something that I don't want to do. Like, yes, maybe it was tough to get up at 4 a.m. It's, it's not great to train until you vomit, but I was always, that was, that's what I loved doing. I loved pushing myself to the limits. I loved getting up early in the morning, maybe not at the time, but like an hour afterwards when you're in the middle of the session, it's like, this is what I really enjoy doing. And so those, those so-called sacrifices, yes, they were, I think they were almost necessary to, to value the opportunities I received. So when I pl- played my first game in Newlands, it was, a, it's when you're building up to obviously like getting ready for the game, you think about all the sacrifices you made, you think about all the things you had to do. And I think, yeah, I was, I, I was very fortunate enough to find myself in an occupation that I love doing. Um, and was very, it was very easy to make those sacrifices for the end result. Mm. When I when I spoke to Dylan Lades, he actually uh, the sac- sacrifice came up, um, and and you know he also said and it stood out for me and stuck with me is that it's actually it's not sacrifices it's actually small investments. 
Um, and those small investments build into your first game at Newlands, um, your cap, your, I mean, you are just, I think like those small bits, the, the small investments eventually, and, and then guys, it's like the tip of the iceberg thing, you know, when guys see the tip of the iceberg, it actually don't see the 4M, the vomiting um, at, at training. Uh, but I mean, I mean, while we're at it, Newlands, your first game at Newlands, chat us through that experience. Jeez, I mean, my my first game in Newlands was nothing nothing special at all. It was an under nineteen Western Province match. Um, that would I think we had twelve people in the stands, something like that. So all of them parents of the team of the the boys who were playing. Um, but it was it was a, such a surreal experience because I mean I grew up here in the Cape. I I went to watch the Stormers like for my birthday. I think like two of my birthday parties, I went to watch the Stormers with mates. Like mm. this was what like me and my family did on Saturdays was we would watch this, we would watch rugby. And so I was, yeah, like, like we said earlier, I was never high, high in rugby at school. I played like, I started in the G team in grade 11, then managed to make my way up to the second team in the trick. And then, I mean, you watch all these guys playing like Craven Week in SS schools, and then when we got to the institute, it was like they they, they made it. They they told me that they'd never ever offered this to like a second team player before, but if you're willing to work hard, you might get your opportunity. And it was, I think it was like the fourth last game of the season. So there was we I've been training with the team basically for nine months and gone a single game. And then someone got injured like one day before the game. So I, I didn't even like train with the team during the week. I just joined for like the captain's run. And I just remember running out. I think it was, it was on the 60, 67th minute. I got 12 and a half minutes. And I just remember so clearly like running out. It was a scrum and just setting foot onto Newlands. I'm like, I am about to play at Newlands Stadium, a, a stadium I have loved and been at my entire like it's just it, it felt right it felt like i was i was doing something incredible which i was so chuffed about and to be playing for western province was was also an absolute dream come true i remember looking at like the 19 on my jersey with utter disbelief so no it was a it was a real surreal experience yeah that's so special uh, i didn't actually know this and maybe it's a, a lack of research but i actually i didn't know so you got a contract or, or went to the institute having played second side at um at boys Eye. yes that's incredible how did that come about so i mean the 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 guys who were playing first team was Salman marat who's not exactly a a, a small <laughs> individual and ruben de villiers who was he was the sa schools lock for like two years in a row so there was like there was quite stiff competition in front of me and I think Paul boys that year, we weren't undefeated, both the first team and second team, which was, I think it was the first time it had happened in 44 years of like our school or something. So we had a phenomenal year of rugby. And I think just through that, through the team playing well, I kind of, I got note. Um, I mean, also being ridiculously tall has its advantages. Um, and so, yeah, I kind of, I kind of got, I got an opportunity I got a call saying they wanted me to come to the Western Province Academy. Um, and I gave it some thought, but decided, decided against it. I wasn't, I wasn't sure like what I wanted to do. And then a couple of weeks later, they, they called me back and said, well, there's actually a space that's open up at the Institute if you would be at all interested. So I figured I was going to go study at Stellenbosch anyway. Um, so I figured oh, it's in Stellenbosch, might as well go have a look. And it seemed like a really interesting opportunity so i decided yeah it's one year of my life i'll go play rugby at the institute and then i'll probably never do it again so just <laughs> just went for it and things kind of it kind of changed the trajectory of the next five years of my life that's world class and, and a bit off topic but now that you may be out of it and you can speak on it uh, there was a bit of chat around you maybe uh, uh, being a Scottish international, were there ever any uh, serious chats that happened um, between you and, and Scotland? Yeah, there, there, there'd been quite a, quite a few, few chats. Um, I, w I had uh, spoken to Gregor quite a, quite a bit about. He just obviously like we, we had meetings and chats, and he wanted to find out about me, and he, they'd, they'd expressed interest in 
me in for the future. So no, there was definitely that on the cards, which would have been an unbelievable opportunity and a very, a very, geez, I, I, yeah. to play international rugby is no small feat. To play it for Scotland would have been yeah, incredible because uh, um, my family is very, we're very proud of like our Scottish heritage. So it's, it would have been, no, it would have been a, a really cool thing to have done, but unfortunately mm. not meant to be. Mm. Well, it's, it, bro, at least it's still a feather in your cap. Still being identified by Gregor Townsend, um, which is phenomenal. Uh, but I think maybe we, let, let's get into the snippets of your, um, of your statement. And it was a really powerful statement, man. Like, I remember reading it actually just like almost getting emotional. Like this is, this is so sad, but um, you know, like really brave and, and saying that I admire about you as well. Um, and, and from, from what I've heard, you, 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 you're a clever guy as well um, in terms of, you know, you use your brain, uh, you studied, um, got a good degree. So yeah, let, let, let's get into the, um, the statements and a piece that really kind of, uh, started it off and kind of shocked the rugby world was this one as a result of having many concussions over the course of my short career i've been advised to stop playing the game hearing that now uh, what sort of emotions come to mind um and, and i suppose how do you reflect on the day that you you actually got the the news like maybe like dave maybe actually need to stop here yeah i mean the day the day i got the news it was it was it was a bit of so like I was just all over the place, but shocked and really, because it was it wasn't really it wasn't expected. So it was it was. I mean, obviously you always think like what if, but you kind of don't really prepare yourself for it. So like when I found out, it was it was a hard, it was a very bitter pill to swallow, and I think it was more. Well, what do I what do I do next? Or it's like is this the right decision it was kind of just weighing up the decision as to all the possibilities all the outcomes and it ended up being like it was i think it was before i even had left the the doctor's office like he told me everything and i i, I went straight away to our team doctor to speak to him i called my parents obviously to get their advice but i think like before i'd even set foot out of the, the hospital i i already knew my career was over because it was it was never, it was, I'd always said to myself, obviously, if rugby was going to impact my health long term, then that was it. I think you just kind of don't ever really expect that day to come. Um, and so, yeah, it was, it was a very, it was a very tough couple of, couple of days immediately after and weeks after that. But I mean, looking back on it, I'm, I'm very confident in the decision I made. I have no uh, regrets in in my decision um it's just obviously having to make the decision was 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 tough and easy at the same time in the sense of like obviously tough to walk away from rugby but very easy to look after my health so yeah so reflecting back on it i'm still very confident i made the right decision and i suppose uh, my body will thank me in 40 30 years time you know yeah, completely. I, and I, yeah, it's incredible. And also, like, was that something you always had, like, in the back of your mind? Like, my body comes first, my health comes first. Yeah, I think not so much. Um, yes, yes, in the sense of I was always because I had had. It wasn't like I all of a sudden got like a lot of concussions. I kind of had like almost one every single year, and so I'd always been aware of that and. Hat was was always like trying to make sure that I was on top of it, doing everything I could to make sure that I kept my kept the the parts of my brain that make me me and make me yeah basically the the individual I am today. Um, and I think so. I always I always kept tabs on it, and I it was recent. It was probably about I think it was after my my knee op last year. I realized. Ugh, like if I if I break a bone, tear a muscle, or whatever, I can I can recover from that. But if my head is injured, then there's there's nothing you can do. So I kind of made the decision that was like, listen, I'll I'll fix body parts, but if if the brain's in trouble, then then I don't think we this is where we call it quits. So I kind of had already made the decision before 
if it was to present itself in the future, I just didn't expect that it would happen so soon. Mm. And, and do you think that there a lot of guys who actually do also think like that, but maybe don't have the the confidence? I don't know really what the right word is to step away from the game because maybe that's that's their dream. You know, that's that's all they maybe have. Do you think there are guys like that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's very possible. I think it's. The, the the problem with concussions is it's a very and head injuries it's a very like gray area there's no like right or wrong the length of period of return there's no it's it's very much depends on the individual's own recovery and their own return to play so and there are many people who've had far more concussions than i had and continue to play and are fine to this day so it's I think there are some, it's the problem is you don't, it's different for every person. Like some people, they don't know if it's the right decision and others, it might not be others. It might. And I think for me, it was maybe a bit easier to step away than it was for most because I had always been educated that you need to have fail safes. You need to have backup plans. You need to be prepared for the worst. And so like I have a degree, I, I've I've worked like I've me and my family we we run a business like we've got property so it's there was it was it was more I was I was more prepared for it than most mm. and so I think it made the decision a little bit easier easier um, but no I I don't I don't I don't want to pretend to know what anyone else is going through in in their injury capacity like have they because it's. Like I said, it's a very gray area and everyone just has to make their decision for themselves. I think it's a very hard decision to make. And hopefully the fact that guys like myself or and I've, I know another guy who I'm, I'm not going to name him now because I don't think he's made it public yet, but he's going to be retiring as well because he's also like, like the concussions have been an issue for him. Um, so like I think the more people talk about it and the more it becomes – an accepted thing that listen, it's the walk away before it's too late. Then, then maybe it becomes easier for other people to do it. But yeah, I think there's a, a lot of people kind of expected me to, not a lot of people, but some people expected me to kind of like hate the game after this. And it's still such a fantastic game. Yo, I've got nothing but love for the game of rugby. Yeah, best best game in the world. I swear, there's there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it, and and that's why I like I I kind of want to be taking this like go overseas, like America. Let's make it massive. You know, the Americans have a way of making things just like massive um, with their sports. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. There we are. That's the word. Bro. I was thinking of it. I was like, no, I can't. Um, but sure, like just back on the back to the day, like you get the you get the the information from the doctor. What if you don't mind sharing what kinds of information you were you were given uh and then like you're just like was it a sinking feeling you know like was it like shit like this is actually this information is has made me realize now mm. yeah i'm so when i spoke to the basically what the doctor told me was that firstly there are everyone is different everyone's brain is different so some people can get hit by a bus and they'll be fine another person takes a tic-tac to the temple and they are in trouble so yeah. it's unfortunately like my my brain was obviously one of the the ones that takes the tic-tac and struggles um so it's after after consulting him he we did like a lot of like it was there was no actual tests it was more just a conversation on how long my concussions last how many i've had what are my symptoms all of that and basically how do i feel about it and after about an hour or so of chatting and like running through all the possibilities i just it, it came down to me asking point blank like listen doc if what what is your advice and he said well listen if you were someone who i cared about this wouldn't even be in a, a conversation like you're done sure. if you were someone who was important to me that it's, it's not worth the risk and so for me there was that was that was that made it easier because it was it almost wasn't my decision it was i was putting myself in the care of an expert who who knows more than i do and i think i i would like to think hopefully 
that I'm not arrogant enough to ignore the expert's advice. So luckily, I think I made the right decision. So yeah, it was, I mean, obviously not the news you wanted to hear, but it's unfortunately we don't get everything we want. Mm. And what what kind of, I suppose, long-term effects have you avoided, you know, having stopped? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously with any, again, there's, there's, there's possibilities of mental illnesses. Obviously, there's mental disability or illness. There's a wide range of things that people do struggle with. Um, concussions, I mean, po- I, I don't know what the it's actually called, but like the concussion disorder, like post-concussion disorder, like people struggle with like rage or depression, anxiety, memory loss, all of the, I don't know, thing, yeah. It's, and so, I mean, for me, the, the biggest fear is I just didn't want to, my memory was one thing I wanted to keep. And then also I didn't want it to, I didn't want my personality to change because of damage to my brain. So it was yeah. hopefully by stopping now, I've prevented long-term effects. And the brain is an incredible, incredible thing. It can regenerate itself so well. So, I mean, even if I have had slight damage, which touch wood, let's hope not, but it's, there's, I can, I'm still young enough to work at it that I can repair and fix any damage that has been done. Mm. yeah i know that's so good that's so good for for the last um little bit that i'm gonna i'm gonna read out for you this is what this is one that's really profound for me i wish i could say something like i'll be back stronger but i can't because it's over and this isn't a happy ending um obviously that that's really powerful uh, and when i read that you know it was like it's almost like brings like it's like a sense of it's final now it's done like um how have you managed? Uh, and I know you said you've got a close knit family uh, and you, you've got a great support structure. But I suppose, you know, like how have you personally managed the the reality and sadness of, of it over the last six weeks? So I've 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 very much relied on the the support of family and friends, which has been incredible. They've all been incredible. Um it was it was overwhelming to see the support that I got initially when I made the announcement. So that was that was incredible to see how many people reached out. I mean, thousands of people contacted me, which was unbelievable. Um, and then I think it kind of just slowly but surely processing that yes, this is over, but it it was out of my control. I did everything I could. I enjoyed every experience I had. I had the time of my life. I, I achieved things that I never thought I would. I learned so much about myself. It was an incredibly positive experience. So it's, it'd be sad to kind of be upset about it. It's, yes, yes, it's sad leaving the game, but I take so much more, so many, many positives out of the experience I had of playing rugby and I know that whatever comes next, while maybe different, it's not going to be any less exciting. So there's 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 so much to do in this world. There's so many opportunities. And yes, one door is closed, but a thousand more have opened. And so now I just I'm gonna figure out what what's the next adventure. What how do I how do I go about my life and and kind of just keep on living, really. There's so much to do, so much to see. So I'm I'm just gonna yeah, I'm just gonna take life kind of one day at a time and see see where things go. There's no there's no I've rem- yeah, I've I've I ha- I have processed the fact that my rugby career is over. Yeah. There's no real point to dwell on the past and and be sad that it's over. I'm I'm more excited for what comes next. I suppose that's maybe the way I've the easiest way I've handled everything. Mm, that's a really, really cool perspective to have. Um, and I want to pick up on that. Like, how have you, has it always been in you to almost like, you know, you, you know you've processed it now, but there's another adventure waiting. Uh, there's so many, there's a thousand doors that are going to open. And I have no doubt that they're, they're going to. Um, but, you know, some guys maybe would struggle with that perspective. And I think that's not, not everyone has that kind of uh, ability to uh, like to almost take yourself out of it. Cool doors are going to open where where have you managed to get that perspective from you know has it always been something you've had in terms of 
bigger picture, take yourself out of the, the, the almost the pressure cooker of what it is, take yourself out, put a perspective. Yeah, I think it's 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 something that I've worked on. It's there's I mean there's tons of self help books and all of that, and I think so. It's it's listen, like heeding the advice of people I care about. It's trying to figure out how to basically process everything in the healthiest way possible. Because I have spent a lot of my life processing things in a really bad way, and it. It, it affected me very badly. And so but I, I had to learn how to figure, figure out things and deal with things in a way that was going to help me and not. So, yeah, so I was, it was more about, I, I suppose I had done the work beforehand to prepare myself, like to make sure that when I am like faced with heavy news or something life-changing or yeah, some like I don't know. Some of my coffee is cold. It's there's you can always kind of like spin it. You can always like there's always different ways to spin things. And I think like good things or bad things don't happen to us. Things just happen to us. The way we view them makes them good or bad. So if we can try and view things in a positive light, then I think the world's our oyster. There's there's lots of opportunities. So yeah, it's. Like I said, it's something I work towards. I've been working on as myself for quite a while, and I think it helped me very much in this scenario. Mm. Yeah, the nuggets of gold in there. Uh, I'm gonna. We're gonna have to clip that, Dave. We're gonna have to clip that. All right. <laughs> um, but sure, I suppose like you know, we've covered the the concussion thing. Obviously, a massive, a massive uh, imp or imp yeah, I guess impact of your life. Um, but the last little bit from your your snippet uh, that that stood out for me was, uh, for the next three years, I lived out a dream that I didn't know I had. Um, world class, like like world class, and I don't know why that stuck with me so much, but it has. Um, and I think off that, let let's maybe reflect on, on some of your your happiest rugby memories. You know, like why not let let's take it back and yeah, you know, just kind of reflect on your your happiest days as as a rugby player. Yeah, I mean, yo, I've got, I've got so many. Um, I think, I mean, some of my happiest days were at UCT. That was, that was a, an incredible club with full of incredible players, coaching staff, just and and everyone you speak to who's been involved in that club. I've yet to meet someone who's had a negative experience there, which is unbelievable. Um, playing my first varsity cup game there was incredible. Running out on the Green Mile. Um, Beating Marty said Donnie Craven was Yo. unbelievable. Um, yeah, my first uh, Super Rugby cap against the Sunwolves, uh, my first Curry Cup match, my uh, and getting my first man of the match in Curry Cup. Getting, I think that there's just there's no one memory that kind of sticks out. It's just it's uh, it's a uh, it's seven years of incredible moments and incredible opportunities uh, filled with phenomenal people who who very much shaped who I am today um and yeah just with regards to like the the dream I didn't know I had I think I think so obviously being a second team player at school and like I was rugby was never my my real sport when I when I was growing up like I never I never dreamed of playing for the Stormers when I was younger because I was never going to. That was I was never going to be the best rugby player. I was never going to be the top. And I made peace with that at a, at a young age that the rugby was not going to be what I was going to do. And then it kind of just, when the opportunity presented itself, I made sure that I worked my ass off and that if another opportunity presented itself, I was ready for it. And then the, bell, the, the phone called one day and... Then so I'd work for that opportunity and then make sure that if another opportunity presented itself, I was ready. And I, I had a I had a coach at UCT who when I was when I was 19 years old, I mean, I think I played two games for the first team. And we were we were like, you know, in a huddle. And I don't know why, but he, he pointed at me in front of me. He said, guys, I just want to tell you something that that man right there, he's going to be a professional rugby player. And I came to him afterwards. I said, why did you do, I've, I've, I've been playing second and third team for UCT. This is like my first, I think it was like my third first team game. Why are you saying this? And he says, he said, it's just, it was because I was always 
willing to work for things that I didn't think I would achieve. So it was the, the ability to kind of prepare myself for the best possible scenario. And so I, 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 it's something that I, I very much, it was a, it was an incredible moment in my career because it, def, it def helped define the rest of my career. And so I just made sure that I worked and I was very fortunate enough that some players got injured here and others got, uh, uh, some people changed unions and eventually I, I made it into the team. So it was, no, I mean, I still remember the call from Robbie Fleck saying I was going to, going to play for the Stormers. So no, it's, it was, it was, no, it was a surreal, surreal journey. Yeah. Now that, that I could just imagine that call, that huddle, like, you know, like you build building momentum, build momentum, get the call from Robbie Fleck as well. You know, it's like those small investments of us have been an incredible feeling. Um, but yeah, I, I know you're a busy guy. You've got, I don't want to take too much of your time. So <laughs> no, no stress at all. Uh, let's, let's end off with two more questions and I'm going to put you on the spot for the one of them. Um, and I think let's go, if you can s like summarize your rugby career in three words, what would it be? A bit on the spot. I know. Yo, this, okay. this, um, this wasn't in the notes. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I no, no, no. I'm, I'm just, I'm just thinking because your three words is, um, yo, I would, I would have to say the one, the one was, it's, I'd say just like, I want to say, yeah, team. It was team. It was a team sport. That was like that. that that's the one word. It's just teamwork and collaboration amongst our team teams that I played through. Um, the one would be um, grateful, unbelievably grateful for all the opportunities that I received and, and all the places I got to go and all the things I got to do, because I know that so many people wanted this probably so much more than I did and unfortunately didn't get to do it. So, um, I was, in, I'm incredibly grateful for the, the opportunity. And then, yeah, um, the final one would probably be passion. Just it, it's this, the, the journey through playing the sport. just, it didn't, it didn't, I already had a passion for rugby, but it, it just like, it showed the other side because I'd always been like small sides playing and then watching it on a Saturday. But it just, it showed me the, I just, what an in incredibly intricate and beautiful and violent game this is and how, how it can change people's lives. And so, yeah, so I'd say team, uh, passion and uh, grateful. grateful. Wonderful. Wonderful. And to finish off, um, you know, we spoke about it. A uh, thousand doors are opening. New adventure awaits. And I know, I know. It's, I mean, I ask this question every time I get. You know, I don't, don't want to look too far into the future. I mean, five years is a long time. But I think, you know, what does the next five years look like for for Dave Mayers and in an ideal world? Gee, like, I mean, I have I have no idea what the next five year, years is going to be like. I can tell you the next two years. Uh, that, Let, that let's I've, do two years. <laughs> I've, I've got an idea of what the next two years will be. Five years, we'll kind of see. Um, but yeah, I'm actually in three weeks. I'm I'm leaving on like a two year excursion around the world. I'm gonna oh, basically nice. pack a bag and just go and see where I can see where I can go. So Beautiful. yeah, so gonna do a lot of South America, a bit of Europe, maybe a bit of Indonesia. Hopefully, make my way up to the Arctic. But yeah, so kind of just gonna look for the next adventure, really. Damn, that's world class. You need to, you need to be getting um, a camera and getting content, oh, bro. Get, get all that content, you know. Yeah. Like. bro. The people would lap that up, lap that up. Sitting behind a desk all day, and there's Dave Mays and um, in Europe or, or South America. That's world class. That's world class. And I'm so I'm so yeah. excited to see that and follow along on that journey. Um, but sure, that wraps us up. I mean, it's been a a good 40 or almost an hour now of chatting. Um, so yeah, and it's been awesome. It's been so cool just to dive into your career 
and then also just also the maturity you've showed um through through your retirement uh, and what something that stood out for me was your perspective on it which is so cool uh, and yo uh, all the best for your adventure man like the next two years i hope you never lack a good thing and i hope it's it's world class and yeah i mean you deserve it you know you 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 work hard uh, and i mean what uh, what your uct coach said you you're willing to work on things that don't seem possible i think if i've got that correctly um so i hope you carry on doing that and you're yeah, just keep being you man um well done on your career first of all as well seven years of grind vomiting i couldn't do that every time the coach i mean i was a fat kid so you know every time every time the, the coach said fitness i ducked i said I said, Mama, you know, you hear the murmurs around school of, and there's going to be a fitness session. Said, Mom, I'm sick. I'm going home. They get the secretary to call. Um, yeah, so I never had that in me, uh, but we're all about different talents. But yeah, I guess the point I'm trying to make is thanks so much for joining me, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course, man. Shock for having me on. It was great to chat to you. And yeah, thanks. Thanks for the conversation.